A job on the notice board catches your attention. It seems that the local cemetery has been infested by specters and ghosts. The prize? 100 gold pieces. Do you accept? Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be finishing out our graveyard project by making a crypt or mausoleum. Uh, we're going to do that using some foam core that I got from the Dollar Tree, a few one inch wide craft sticks that I got from Michael's, some very thin cardboard or cereal box, I'm using an old uh, apple cider container, and some foam bricks that I cut from some foam core. Alright, so to start things off, I cut these into shape already. We've got 3 inches by 4 inches, and this is going to be the uh, front and back of the crypt. So, I want this to be kind of like an archway, so I'm just going to mark out a qu 3 quarters of an inch in from both sides, and then the height of it where I start the arch is going to be uh, the height of the side wall pieces and those side pieces are two and a half inches tall by five and a quarter inches long now for the roof angle i'm just marking out the center of what is going to be the top and then just cutting off the extra so that the edges line up with our uh, side wall section so for the archway i'm going to come down a half inch on the sides and an inch from the steeple and that is going to be the rough area of our uh, archway all right so there we go uh, now we're going to very carefully cut this out with an exacto knife and now this is a extra piece of foam that's going to go behind everything uh, it's just going to uh, kind of tuck in behind the archway to give a little bit more depth. So now to add a little bit of extra texture, I'm using a piece of tin foil that I've wadded up to just kind of add some impressions and some kind of stone-like texture to everything. Then using a uh, kind of firm tool, I'm just kind of smoothing out the edges and adding a little bit of bevel to what's going to be the outside of the arch. So now because I really like how strong it holds everything together, I'm using a little bit of wood glue to attach the outside and the inside of the arch. So I made this little arch template, uh, just some freehand curves on a uh, piece of craft stick. Uh, if you do something like this, mark it so that you never accidentally throw it away. Then I marked out some archways to go on the side panel. Uh, you can make these spaced however you like. Once I've got it marked, I'm going to, again, very carefully cut everything free. Uh, that way we have some nice little arches to add a little bit of extra depth to the side. And then again, I'm going to attach everything together with a little bit of wood glue. Now, the uh, backing for these side panels is a little bit shorter than I had originally thought, but we'll fix that later in the video. So now to attach the front and the sides together, I'm using a a couple of pins to just kind of stick everything together while the glue dries and I eventually decided, you know what, I'm just going to press these all the way in. I'm not super worried about the piece breaking, so this is going to add a little bit of extra reinforcement to the corners. Alright, so this is our super structure of everything, so now we need to add a little bit of extra detail and I want to add some uh, support columns to the outside and in between our little archways as well as a little bit of support for our roof, and that's going to go all around the top edge. So to make these uh, support columns for the corners, I'm just doing a very simple uh, lay of some foam bricks. This is nothing fancy, it's pretty much the same thing that we've done in the last few videos. Uh, I'm just alternating to kind of give it a hand-laid uh, masonry brick pattern. Now I'm going to bring this up on all four corners right up to where it meets the top of the side panel and then we'll add a couple of uh, angled pieces that have been cut to kind of help fit in the 
uh, sections going across the steeple. Alright, so now moving on to the side panels, we're going to create a couple of little support columns. Now these are purely decorative, but I loved the little extra touch that they added to the finished product. So I'm going to very quickly just add in some blocks here. And uh, this is very simple, one horizontal, one vertical, just going all the way up. And then as I'm laying in the uh, roof support, um, some of the bricks were a little bit too long, so while the glue is wet, you can quickly swap them out for bricks that are a little bit more appropriately sized to fit the area. Alright, so now that we've got our roof support and things are a little bit dry, we're going to add a little bit of corner detail for all of these archways. Now I'm taking a square brick that I've made and I'm just cutting them in half uh, to create a couple of triangles and these are going to be stuck in place in all the corners. So now to make the support for the roof on the steeple, uh, I'm just doing roughly the same pattern going up the front angles. Now this is a whole lot of tedious little brickwork. Uh, this was what took the longest amount of time in the project, but the finished product is really worth it. It gives a whole lot of extra character. Okay, so while all the brickwork is drying, we're gonna make a simple door. I glued a few coffee sticks to a playing card, and then using a few of the crinkly sections from some bobby pins, I'm going to create three little uh, rough support areas. Now we're not going to do anything fancy like we did for the reinforced door. This is just to give a little bit of extra detail and extra dimension to the doorway. Now I am spacing these out every half inch uh, since our door is going to be fairly tall. Uh, this is going to look pretty good and fairly appropriate. Alright, so while that's still wet, we can do a quick little test check to make sure that everything's spaced correctly, and then I'm going to just pop in a little door handle. Alright, we're going to let that dry, and then we'll paint it up off camera with some skeleton hoard. Alright, so now we're on to making the roof, and doing a quick measure, I don't want it to go past the bricks. Uh, so we need five and a quarter inches to make our roof section. So on the back of the serial card, uh, I want the glossy side facing outward. So we're going to draw our grid on the non-glossy side. So these are half inch uh, strips that I cut and then I do a quick little snip cutting about two thirds of the way through and then to kind of create a almost slate tile look. I just nip off the edges to create a kind of little uh, V cut on the edge of all the tiles. All right, so now we're gonna need a bunch of these, so I'm gonna cut those off camera. And now we can start laying them out on our roof. Now these are the uh, wooden uh, craft sticks. I just glued two of them together to be our roof support. So I cut these uh, roof tiles to kind of be alternating. Uh, we're going to need seven per side of the roof. So that's going to be uh, three of one kind and four of the other, where we want our small section to kind of be the alternating piece. Now you can cut these individually and place them individually, but doing them in strips makes it a lot easier. So now, uh, you might notice I've got a little bit of warping and curve on these. Uh, I did find that after I left it to dry overnight, the warping did kind of come out and everything was fine. So now we're going to do a couple of coats of Mod Podge and gray paint. This is going to add extra strength to the piece and give a base coat and kind of protect all the foam. Now, I'm using gray because it's a nice base coat for 
the kind of stonework that I'm using. You can mix any color you want with the Mod Podge. Uh, this just has the benefit of helping you see if you've missed any spots. So now I mixed some gray and Fethello blue to kind of give a little bit of an overbrushing to kind of give a blue tint to the entire piece, but I didn't want it like super blue, I just wanted it to be kind of like a hint of blue. So I did a two to one mix, two parts gray, one part blue. Now right now this looks really really blue, but it actually dries a lot more faded. And then to tie everything together, we're going to do a dry brush of neutral gray. Now I'm going kind of a medium dry brush. You can go as light or heavy as you want with this. It just depends on how much blue you want to see in the finished product. So now for our roof, I'm going to paint this up with a deep green from Artist Loft. Now, one coat is absolutely not enough. Um, I actually wish that I had taken this out and base coated it with like a spray primer, but uh, I ended up doing two coats, could still see part of the original color from the uh, cereal box, and then I did three coats, and then it was perfectly green, so yeah, definitely recommend doing a spray primer. And then to finish out the roof, I'm doing a uh, dry brush of some Artist Loft Deep Red. Uh, I'm painting from the top, painting downward, so that I still have some bits of green in the recesses of the roof panels. Uh, this gives a really nice kind of two-tone look where you've got almost predominantly red, but you can still see green behind everything, and it's a really nice look and it's a really easy effect to do. Alright, so now it's time to put everything together, and we're going to do that with a little bit of hot glue. So for the door, I'm just gluing on the sides where the card is, slotting it into place, and then just kind of pressing everything down until the glue solidifies. And if there's any gaps left in the door, I can do a quick little touch with some hot glue to kind of fill those. Now for the roof, I'm going to very carefully apply the hot glue to the edges where it's going to line up with the steeples, and then just kind of fit it in place and press it down. Now there is a little bit of a gap where the roof meets the uh, sidewall, but it's not really noticeable, so I'm not worried about it. So now for the base, I made up this little kind of a card uh, template and just kind of going to glue that down. Now, off camera, I add a little bit of filler to fill in the sides and some ground cover. So here we are with the finished product. You can easily put this together to make a lot of different scenes. Here I've got it set up as kind of a graveyard. Uh, I really love how this kind of fits together with all of our other graveyard project stuff. Uh, you can also use this in kind of a cityscape to create a little like scenic temple or a small shrine that you can have set up to a local deity. Uh, all in all, this was a quick and easy project to put together. It took me about a day to do. So thank you everyone for watching this project. Please hit that like button, subscribe for future content, comment in the comment section, and we will see everyone next episode.